You know, I first um, was introduced to your book by a good friend of mine um, probably 30 years ago. Mm. And um, I read it on a plane on the way out to play golf in Portugal. Mm. And um, it immediately struck a chord with me. Mm. And um, I took the, the back hit uh, idea mm. um, out to uh, Villa Mora 1 and shot uh, probably what was my best round of golf in my life mm. so far mm. and then never used it again oh, i so believe extraordinary. it <laughs> i did that myself <laughs> mm. so um, i think that um, the whole point of um, mm. uh, of this experts page tim is is to let the um, um the rest of the golfing public uh, fully understand um, what you do and the difference that the inner game theories can make so maybe you could just, uh, over the next few minutes, give us a, a little idea of, of what the inner game techniques are about. Well, let's start with your experience in Portugal. Um, fascinating question, because I've done the same thing in tennis. And uh, it wasn't back hit or bounce hit, but it was something else. And I played the best tennis I'd played. And um, I didn't do it again for six months. And then I didn't even remember doing it for six months. And so it's very hard to understand that. Why you do one thing, you're sure it's going to, uh, it, it has proved itself, it's improved your game. How could you possibly forget it? And. You know, my own speculation was uh, somebody asked me after the tennis match, how did it feel? And I said, it felt great, except there was one thing missing. And they said, what was that? I said, well, it was the missing was the sense that I'd done it, by God. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that part of me um, seemed to be absent, the one that was controlling the victory. And uh, so one way of looking at inner game techniques is how to uh, quiet the part of us that's trying to control everything when it really doesn't know enough to be in control. It's like a, we have a teenager in our head that thinks it knows everything, wants to tell you how to do everything. It's read a few books, fills you full of shoulds and shouldn'ts. And uh, meanwhile, the one that has to do the action, your body, your potential, is taking these orders from a 10 cent computer, whereas it's a billion dollar computer. And so the techniques of the inner game are designed to quiet the interference of the 10 cent computer and evoke the potential of the billion dollar computer, which is really magnificent. But we miss a few shots and we form an idea in our head that we're not good golfers or that we slice or whatever it might be, we can't hit far. So we develop these self-images and basically end up living up to them. So, you know, it's quite amazing how people hit their handicap level and stop improving because they decide I'm a 20 handicap person. And it's much harder to change an identity than it is to change performance. But if you're identified with a certain level of performance, then it's harder to change. So what does the body need in order to learn a new skill or to develop a skill it already has into a higher level? And basically what it needs is more awareness of what it's doing. In golf, it translates into feel. You need more feel of the action that you have in order for it to take the next step to change it 
into what feels better and what works better. Those are the two natural reinforcers of behavior, what feels good and works. Everything that feels good doesn't work. Everything that works doesn't feel good. When those two are together, you've got a straight path to improvement. So in tennis, just to give you a simple example of a technique, you ask the person to say the words bounce when the ball bounces and hit when it hits their racket, bounce when it hits on the other side of the net, and hit exactly when it hits the opponent's racket. And to not worry about doing anything right. Your, your goal, your focus is to say bounce on time and hit on time. And I'll be listening. <laughs> and um, you be listening. So they go bounce, hit, bounce, hit, bounce, hit. And pretty soon they're hitting 20, 30 balls over the net whereas before they would only hit three or four without getting nervous about how well they were playing. But they'd never judge themselves whether they could be aware of the bounce and hit of the ball. So there was no judgment. There was feedback from reality of the ball in four critical moments of its path. The hit from the opponent where it bounced on your side, when you hit it, and where your ball landed yeah. for critical moments. So they're what I call critical variables, which is what you want to increase awareness. So an inner game instruction has two components. One is it increases feedback from reality. And two is it distracts your mind that's distracting you. It distracts you from the distraction of your own mind. When it can do both those successfully, it's a really useful technique. Um, just to compare it with uh, normal golf or tennis instruction, uh, a, a common error of tennis players is to not hit the ball in the center of the racket. A traditional pro will look at that behavior, see the student is not hitting the ball in the center, analyze why. Well, he's hitting it too late, he's not hitting it in front, um, he's not stepping into the ball, he's too close, he's too far away. Analyze why is he not hitting it in the center. Inner game pro will say, where is your ball hitting on the racket? And he said, not in the center. I said, I didn't ask you where it wasn't hitting. I asked you where was it hitting. Oh, you want me to know where it is hitting? Yes, I want you to be able to point to the part of the racket that the ball strikes the racket. <clears throat> so he goes, oh, up here, the frame. Down here, over here, over here, center, 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 over here, center, 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 center. <clears throat> why does that happen? He didn't analyze why he wasn't hitting it in the center. And the two, those two fundamental reasons. It feels better, solid, crisp, and it works better. Ball goes more in the direction you're intending it to go and with more power. So the main reason though it happens is your body isn't being interfered with in the learning process. He will change full work in order to hit the ball in the middle of the racket. Yeah. And whenever I see them trying to hit it in the middle, I say, you're trying to hit the ball in the middle of the racket. And they say, oh, well, yeah, a little. I say, no, 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 don't try to do that. And then they say, and then I ask them again, are you hit, trying to hit the ball in the middle? I say, no, the racket's doing it. And then you know that they're not trying. Self one is out of the picture. Self two, the racket doesn't know how to hit the ball, doesn't know anything. It's a piece of wood, a piece of metal. 
and some strings, but something they're not used to calling them selves. Self too is doing the adjustments it needs to do. And it's pleasurable, so it's self-reinforcing, and it gives you the results you want. Yeah, it was, uh, I'm sure that most golfers would be fascinated to know that they've got a, a, a billion dollar brain. Mm. Um, and uh, it's quite surprising how much uh, evidence that they actually need to know that they've got that, uh, right. that billion dollar brain. Um, how do you see um, uh, the inner game coaching uh, growing over the, the next, the next uh, one to, to ten years, Tim? Well, first, is it going to grow? Yeah. And uh, I say yes. The whole, you know, when I started teaching in a game, there was no such thing as sports psychology. All right. There wasn't even that profession. There wasn't even the profession of executive coaches. Those all grew up in the last 30 years. And it showed an interest in getting the best out of people, whether it's work or play. And I think that interest is going to continue. Those that get the best out of the people are going to win. The people that get the best out of themselves are not only going to win, they're going to enjoy the process yeah. much more. So the, the deck is stacked on the side of it taking root and progressing and progressing. That's not to minimize what keeps it from being accepted. Because we put a lot of trust and belief in technical instructions, things that we can tell ourselves to do that have proven to be part of a good golf swing. And they may be part of a good golf swing, but that doesn't mean that telling yourself to do them is the best way to learn them. It may be by observing them, it may be by feeling them, it may be by uh, just feeling what works. And I'd say that's how we learned how to walk and talk, by seeing what worked and seeing what felt good. How come Chinese people learn how to speak Chinese? And Americans learn how to speak American. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's what's in the environment. They're paying attention to what's in their environment. They're seeing what gets responses. And it's part of a whole natural learning environment. So I would say that coaching will continue to develop away from teaching information and much more towards creating an environment in which people excel. And that's a very different process and I think the pendulum is definitely swinging in that way. Fantastic. Well, you know, uh, Tim, again, th fantastic uh, to, uh, to listen to you um, yet again. Uh, it's something that I'll never tire of. Um, I hope that uh, we see the, uh, the growth of uh, specific inner game schools. Hmm. Um, in the meantime, I would just like to uh, say to the general public, um, Tim's book, The Inner Game of Golf, is readily available uh, for all bookshops and uh, start um, uh, uh, looking at the new opportunities that the inner game techniques offer you by reading that, and uh, we'll see more of you soon. Just like to say one other thing, and that is, I don't believe the inner game is simply for the purpose of learning better golf. But golf is a wonderful medium in which to learn the inner game, yeah. to overcome the fears and the doubts that we all carry with us and the limiting beliefs. And if we can get good at that game, our whole lives get better. And that's where the big payoff is. Yeah, I think that's, that's a wonderful point. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.